Hello Nano Dimensioners. Mr. Investor, look, my name is Miguel. I'm a retail investor here in London. This is going to be a huge video, so make sure you get your popcorn. So in the last video, we covered all the industries that Nano Dimensions could be in. This was crazy lucrative numbers. We're talking in the trillions. So the stock blew up on the patent news. It went all the way up to like 11.50, I think it was at one point, or 11.45. And then we had the drawback based on that direct offering. We also had this article. <laughs> ay, 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 hallelujah. We also had this article come out talking about 1 billion cash on hand and a major acquisition on the cards and all the meantime here our darling Kathy Woods kept buying up the star this was averaging now at over a million dollars per day and she was buying up inside the ARC Q and the ARC W ETFs we can see all these institutions starting to buy up Nano Dimensions 2 on Fintel so today we're going to be discussing a previous collaborative partnership with Harris which is now merged to become L3 Harris also I don't know if you guys saw this but this is marketing done right you can see Nano Dimension interview is going to air on Bloomberg International on the red chip money report and here if you look into this paragraph the red chip money report airs in 100 million homes on Sundays at 6 p.m local time in every country in Europe on Bloomberg International so this is really going to get the stock in front of 100 million eyes baby 100 million that's if we're all cyclopses so this company behind me L3 Harris I've seen them close more contracts than I've had hot dinners literally they can't stop winning contracts look here this is just yesterday they won another potential 122 million dollar contract so we're going to be looking at their investor presentation we are going to be looking at the huge military budgets and how much Biden is going to be putting into play we are going to look at potential catalysts that might make the stock pop or make the stock drop baby let's watch Jim Cramer also talk about L3 Harris with the CEO on CNBC Mad Money. We're also going to watch Yoav Stern talk about defense and military applications for nano dimensions. If you're able to support the channel, please click the join button above my head and become a true supporter. It only costs 99 cents and you'll really help me out to create good quality content and research. But if you're unable to become a member, just you clicking the like button and clicking subscribe is enough for me. I really appreciate you guys and you mean the world to me. Always remember, I'm not financial advisor and this is for entertainment purposes only. Mmm, first things first, let's talk about the proof of collaboration. So this is going to show you why it makes sense for Nano Dimensions to be working with aerospace and defense companies. Make sure you watch to the end, look at all the numbers and tell me what your thoughts are. Drop me a comment below. So Harris and Nano Dimension has been working together for years. This article is from 2018 here and you can see Harris Corp, 3D prints, RF amplifiers using Nano Dimensions Dragonfly Pro. Look at these best friends. In this particular article, they were talking about hardware that um, Nano Dimensions is going to give them, the Dragonfly Pro, that will fly onto the International Space Station and it will help them produce electronic components and devices up there. As you can see in this article too, Nano Dimensions has been working with the Department of Defense. Nano Dimensions, a certified US Department of Defense vendor. So some of you guys might be thinking, who the hell is L3 Harris? L3 Technologies and you have Harris and Harris specializes in electronic systems, tactical radars and space antennas. L3 similarly, similarly, and L3 technology similarly has its expertise in aerospace and navigation. So when they merged together, they created this beast of a company called L3 Harris Technologies. Fast forward, baby. So you guys just need to look at these numbers. These numbers are crazy and it's all going to make sense why this is applicable to nano dimensions and why it's important for nano dimensions to have this collaboration. So here on the screen, you can see the third quarter calendar 2020 earnings. They had a conference call and look how much billions they're making they've got 4.5 billion dollars in revenue so this company regularly makes billions in every single quarter so this company is constantly getting contracts on the ground in the air and under the sea but even these contracts here are very important you can see they're getting contracts in space so before we go into space I just want to show you how much they have managed to secure in previous government contracts. $496 million for a jamming system. This is electronic warfare. They even win contracts for artificial intelligence. And here you can see Elon Musk, SpaceX and L3 Harris Technologies have both got Pentagon contracts. So this is for tracking missile systems from outer space. Not only that, but L3 Harris Technologies is an absolute beast and expert in communications. So here you can see December 2020, they got a US Army radio contract. And this one here has a ceiling of $3.9 billion. And with regards to the L3 Harris and SpaceX contracts, look how much they earned here. $149 million for SpaceX and L3 Harris actually got more. They got $193.5 million contracts. $1.7 billion in Space Force contracts too. And I don't know how accurate this is, but Florida Today said that Harris Corp was part of a $50 billion contract from the US General Services Administration. And the contracts never stop. We've got $280 million here, $243 
$3 million here for a GPS system. And what's interesting to note is the government contracts here for coronavirus. So L3 Harris Technologies was also supplied some government contracts for coronavirus tracking. And although on the right it says here that the amount committed is $0, it's because it's not complete yet. If you actually click inside the contract, you can see how much it's worth. Clickety click, you see the potential value here is $132 million. But what's strange about this is it says COVID-19. The date is effective from 2016. 2016, I thought COVID-19 was 2019. So with all these government contracts, I want to see where does Nano Dimension sit within this? And I think they're sitting at the very center. Let me put myself in the spaceship. Yeah, baby. So this is a case study within Nano Dimensions presentation. You can see here it's Harris USA, Harris Corp. And Dr. Arthur Paolulela, he is a senior scientist. He has said the ability to manufacture radio frequency systems in-house offers an exciting new means for rapid and affordable prototyping and volume manufacturing. The results of the study provide substantial motivation to develop this technology further. So there's one big question on everybody's lips. Can this dragonfly Pro machine be used in mass production or are they putting money into developing it into a mass production beast so now we've got this connection between government contracts growth in aerospace and defense with l3 harris and we've got nano dimensions dragonfly machine being a core part of prototyping and volume production but is there money and budget for scalability oh baby you know how to deep dive into that budget so this is the department of defense budget estimates for the year 2020 if you can see what i saw in this presentation i'm just trying to wrap my head around it these are some insane figures just just take a look at these billions. So this is the operation and maintenance title summary. You can see on the left, we have the army, boom, bada, boom. And they've got the estimate of 74.4 billion for budget, right? For operation and maintenance. The Navy has got 68 billion. The Air Force has got 64 billion here. And defense-wide and other stuff is 82.5 billion. So the next thing I did was control F. I searched for the keyword of communications. I wanted to see exactly how much the Department of Defense was spending on electronics communications. So the reason being is Harris Corporation actually wanted to 3D print, you know, radio frequency circuits. And then Harris selected Nano Dimensions for that. And here it says Harris is a leader in the development of radio frequency circuits for electronic warfare and communication systems. So when we went back into this and we were looking at depot maintenance, so the maintenance of aircrafts, missiles, all this equipment, right? I saw electronics communications right here. And the plan is electronics communications increased to support 4,300 overhauls on communications, electronic and IT items such as satellite stations, depot support teams for guardrail equipment, and communication security equipment. And just above that, you can see for the financial year, the Department of the Army asked for $2 billion. Smell that money, baby. And then I wanted to see the exact breakdown for each body, electronics and communication systems for the Army. And you can see how much funding they got here on the right, 328 million, and they still require another 466 million. And in terms of other contracts, it's 445 million and 541 million is still requested. You go down to the Navy and it's still quite a few millions. Marine Corps is quite low as well. It's about 50 million, not that much. And then boom, you see the US Air Force. And you can see here, there's hundreds of millions. There's like 2 billion over here and they're still required another few billion so then we look at the free seas and we understand why communications is so important for the military the communication helps them identify who is the enemy here with combat identification and it also supports navigation of their fleets and vehicles and then i found jim kramer talking on mad money about l3 harris and talking about the fight of the future and how modern day warfare is innovative and we're going to be fighting from space so we're talking about suborbital warfare you have come up with something artificial intelligence and machine learning that to me speaks for 21st century warfare. The fight of the future is all about taking information from sensors and getting it to a shooter, a soldier, a, a platform, an aircraft in, in almost real time. And in fact, that's exactly what we're doing. We own that full chain from the sensor to the image processing or the data processing to the dissemination through resilient systems, you know, down to whatever weapon system that's gonna take action and doing it in real time. All domain command and control, that's, the, that's sort of the buzzword coming out of the, of the Department of Defense. It's how do you move faster to bring information from our very sophisticated ISR systems to some action happening, some effect. Kramer also explains about budget and how people were thinking that Joe Biden was going to cut budget in some military aspects, but he may actually increase the budget for this kind of smart technological fighting. So we're talking about electronic warfare, we're talking about satellite warfare, space warfare. And I think that you might be able to tell our viewers 
that there really isn't that much difference between Democrats and Republicans in terms of military spending, but the Democrats have favored the kind of intelligent defense that you guys provide. No, I think you're exactly right. I think uh, there's, a, there's a very strong bipartisan view about strong defense, strong national defense, a pivot towards technology, things like you, you mentioned in your opening, artificial intelligence, uh, communi communications, you know, resilience systems, ISR space. All of those things are important and essential in the near peer threat that we have in the future. And they've stood tall to strong defense, and we expect that it's going to be the same way in the under a Biden administration. We talk about the satellite business being a business that could be worth billions. Our satellite business is, is really fantastic. It's brought us space. So we do a lot in the in the classified space. We do a lot in non-classified areas. So every satellite that every GPS system that's been launched to date, including one that was launched last week, has content from L3 Harrison. We're very prominent on weather systems, the number one provider of weather imaging systems to NOAA. You know, but space is very, very exciting. It's a war fighting domain. It has become contested. It's being challenged, taking capabilities on commercial sat or small satellites. And we're a market leader on both of those areas. We see that to be a very strong growth opportunity for the company going forward. So if you guys watch my previous videos, like thousands of others, we, I think we've got like 18,000 views on this video, but I'm talking about the Department of Defense using 3D printing. And this is even on the battlefield. So you can see here, he's got 3D printers in the back. And then I'm going to show you where I think they're using nano dimensions technology. So I think they're using the Dragonfly Pro for certain things. So look at the terminology here. As we know, Department of Defense is already working with nano dimensions. Electronic printing uses an inkjet printer to print electronic components such as munitions, antennas, fuse elements, and batteries. Inks that can conduct electric current, such as silver, are printed in layers onto a film surface, which creates conductors, semiconductors, and resistors. This process allows engineers to potentially print sensors directly onto a weapon or even an article of clothing. For instance, a radio antenna made up of nanoparticles printed onto a flexible polyamide substrate could be embedded onto a soldier's helmet, placing the antenna that currently attaches to the head's gear. Similarly, electronics could be printed on the side of artillery, freeing up space inside the round. Printed electronics use space more efficiently than conventionally made electronics and generate less waste. So this sounds like nano dimensions all over it. It's like silver dielectric ink. So we're talking about inks that can conduct electrical current such as silver, which creates conductors semiconductors or resistors and they're talking about sensors and antennas too which is what nano dimensions does and you can see here that they've been working with a military provider called Hensolt and this military provider is a sensor solution provider and Thomas Muller the Hensolt CEO said that military sensor solutions require performance and reliability levels far above those of commercial components nano dimensions also do conductors semiconductors resistors semiconductor devices are more than just computer chips they're talking about components like diodes transistors, sensors, other electronic devices made from a variety of semiconductors. And they need these to be small. As they were saying, they can put them inside weapon systems. So nano dimensions being able to miniaturize these and make them more lightweight are so beneficial for the military. As you guys may know, this video I'm about to play is going to be aired in front of millions of people, 100 million homes, they said. And this specific clip is going to talk about all the military applications for nano dimension. Now you have several military applications. I think you said earlier that um, a previous interview that the Israeli military is using your technology, perhaps the U.S. military, what would they use it for? In general, in the defense application all over the world, it's being used in places where you need miniaturization of devices, when you need devices that are in three dimension and can be squeezed into small spaces, you can realize yourself what spaces they are. Use it when you need RF devices together with electronics when they are on, in missiles or in space. You can use it when you need very light devices, when you can condense a lot of things in small volume and it's light when it's flying in the air anywhere in the air. By the way, not only in defense, it's true for aviation in commercial aviation. That's what the defense industries are using our uh, our technology. So imagine this video right here is going to be aired in front of a hundred million homes. So imagine what that's going to do to the stock price. So if you aren't convinced already, I'm going to go into the investor presentation. This is going to be really key because you're going to see the financials. You're going to see some numbers in this presentation where you'll be able to decipher for yourself how much this collaboration is worth to Nano Dimension. L3 Harris Technology specializes in aerospace and defense technology. Look at this. 
$18.1 billion in revenue. They've got a very diversified business with strong customer relationships and they serve over 100 countries worldwide. So let's take a look at some of the revenues in different categories for this company. So let's look at their varied revenue stream in different categories for L3 Harris. Okay guys, so this is the different revenue streams we can see here. They've got integrated mission systems, space and airborne systems, communication systems and aviation systems. And if we take a look at some of the keywords here, you can see that a lot of them are using electrical and electronic systems, advanced electro optic infrared, lasers, sensors, advanced wireless solutions, space and airborne systems, you can see electronic warfare just above my head, and then communication systems, they're using radio communications, they're using a full suite of helmet and weapon mounted integration systems, radios, applications and equipment for critical public safety and professional communication. And here in the aviation systems, you can see they're using electrical components, they're using antennas, radio frequency and microwave devices. So they're using a lot of electrical components and devices across every single segment. Now, if we look at the growth in the margins over here and revenue in millions. So out of these segments, 75% of these segments are increasing revenue streams. Next, I wanted to show you the scale of growth. So nano dimensions could be a part of all of these. So over on the left here, I want you to see that they're well positioned in the Department of Defense portfolio. You can see here, electronic warfare is increasing. These are all compound annual growth rates and everything is increasing here, including GPS systems, tactical radios, electronic warfare. So earlier on in this video, I was showing you all the government contracts that they've previously got and how they continue to grab these government contracts. Here you can see they continue to secure government and private sector contracts. They've got a multi-billion dollar pipeline and look out of 37 contracts, they've been awarded 25. They also continue to submit proposals for other government contracts. And as you can see on my right down here, they plan to expand and focus on 10 countries. So you can see UK here, you can see South Korea, you can see Japan, Canada, loads of different countries that they're focusing on so they can grow their revenue streams. In this slide here, you can see how Nano Dimensions could be a key part of research and development. So their research and development spending, they've broke it down, you know, 40% here, 35% here, 20% here, 5% here. Command and control, electronic warfare, tactical radios. 40% of spending. Space missions is going to require sensors. 35% of their research and development spent here on sensors, data analytics. We're talking about capturing, distributing, processing and analyzing data. Warfighter effectiveness, we can see here 20% of their budget. And then the other 5% of their budget is spent on aviation, so safe and secure skies. So as we saw earlier on in the presentation, that nano dimensions can help them with not only fast prototyping, but they can also help them with volume manufacturing. In terms of communication systems, these guys are number one at globally. So they sell to the US Department of Defense, but loads of other international governments. As you can see here, L3 Harris is number one provider in Department of Defense and internationally. Global leadership, baby. So let's remember, Nano Dimensions helps them with radio frequency. So if we look at the radio contracts on the right, and we see the budget increase as well over here on the left, we'll be able to put two and two together. We'll see how much Nano Dimensions can be a key part of production. These guys make a lot of money from tactical radio solutions. We can see here $390 million for this small radio, 255, 756 million, all the way up to 3.9 billion with the Army Rifleman Radio and 12.7 billion with the Army HMS Man Pack. So here on my left, you'll be able to see the Department of Defense tactical radio related budget and how it's increased to 8 billion over the next five years. So take a look at this graph 2017 all the way up to 2024 we have a big rise. If Nano Dimensions has a connection with the Department of Defense and L3 Harris how much money can they potentially make from just these two? Drop me a comment below let me know your thoughts. So guys before I wrap up this video I wanted to talk about Nano Dimensions and where you think the stock price could go next week because we're going to be airing the Yoav Stern interview video in front of 100 million homes. How do you think that's going to affect the stock price? So this video is getting crazy long so I'm going to wrap up here but before I go I want to tell you guys in the next video I'm going to be talking about all the catalysts together holistically that can explode the stock. So make sure you're subscribed with the bell notifications clicked so you don't miss the video and if you're able to join just click the join button here it's 99 cents. If not please like this video and I'll see you next time. Much love Mr. Investalot. Over and out, baby. Shoo.